Hey everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be looking at D-Day, American Forces in Normandy 1944. This is the latest uh, Flames of War supplement in their late war range, and this is the first of the D-Day books. So I'm really excited because if you haven't caught on for mid-war and late war, I'm primarily an American player. Uh, I like playing Americans, and I absolutely love uh, Shermans of any size, shape, and form. So they slapped some Shermans, uh, some new artwork. I haven't seen this artwork before on the cover. Um, I'm already feeling good. Now, what are my thoughts? Before we crack this book o open, I'm just going to give you my overall opinion of this book because previous releases like version 3, version 2, they set the bar really high for these uh, source books, these intelligence briefings. Uh, there are some fantastic books in those previous versions. Um, and I know a lot of gamers are hesitant to give those up. So Battlefront has, uh, you know, unintentionally set that bar really high for themselves. But, you know, does D-Day American Forces in Normandy um, reach that bar? Well, we'll find out. I'll, I'll save my final thought. But initially, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm, I was pleasantly surprised uh, cracking this open and seeing exactly what was in it. So what is in it? Let's go ahead and check out the index. Well, we'll look at these uh, products after we take a look at the book. All right, here are the uh, contents for the D-Day American book. So I'm not going to do a page turn of this book. I know Battlefront doesn't like that. But I will show you some pages and talk about everything that's in here. So what do you get as far as formations? Um, and I, again, was pleasantly surprised with what they included in this book. We have a parachute rifle company, a glider rifle company, and those are in the D-1 section, which was actually a, a separate source book in uh, some versions ago. Then we have Hit the Beach. We have a ranger company, an assault company, a rifle company, and then veteran assault and rifle companies. So that's uh, five different types of companies uh, for Hit the Beach, which cover the beach landing. And if you've seen um, one of my battle reports with Jake, we did a beach landing mission um, using version 4 rules, but we kind of um, um, had to, nothing existed really to convert it uh, to, to version 4 yet, so we kind of did our own thing. But um, now we, we have some official rules for that. Then we have the breakout, which would be kind of Operation Cobra time. Uh, we have an M4 tank company, uh, Stewart company, armored rifle company, and then veteran Sherman, Stewart, armored uh, companies, as well as an M10 tank destroyer company. Then we have a whole slew of support units that are pretty well themed for um, Normandy. Something that I really like that they included here as well is they do have missions. So they include uh, four different missions. Uh, Shot in the Dark mission, Airborne Assault, uh, Help is on the way, and FUBAR missions. Uh, and I know that those are just covering different types of operations that Americans participated in on D-Day, giving you some themed uh, scenarios to fight, like a beach landing or a, a nighttime assault by paratroopers, which is cool. All right, so here is an example of a Sherman Tank Company layout. Um, if you checked out my Fortress Europe uh, review, um, I took a look at the M4 Sherman company in that product. So if you watch both reviews, you can kind of get a difference in, in how it's changed here. So here you've got your Sherman HQ. You've got um, a requirement of a platoon of Shermans, either regular Shermans or the upgraded Sherman 76. And then a second platoon that's either going to be regular Shermans or Stewarts. Then you can add more Shermans, uh, assault gun Shermans, the 105 millimeter Shermans, and then also uh, the always good to take 81 millimeter armored mortar platoon. You, you always want to take that. Now, in um, previous versions of the book, of, you know, source book like this, it might have like the, uh, a column for points depending on your division you're in, like the third armored company or third armored division versus the second armored division. And one of them in that version might have been veteran and one of them might have been trained. Um, and then you had the points all on the same page. So this book is doing it a little bit different in that you've got your, um, this is, for example, the third division, the spearhead division. 
which has ratings similar to trained in version 3. So these are your basically your trained tanks. So they're they're more um, new to the battlefield. They're they're not quite as veteran. Whereas you look at the veteran M4 Sherman tank company, and this is the second division, Hell on Wheels division, um, and these guys have stats more in line with what you'd expect for veterans. So these guys are hit on four. Uh, they're they're careful. So they're they're handling that in in a different way than version three did, uh, but the the flavor is still there. You've got both. Um, U.S. tank divisions, the third and the second, with different stats to reflect them. And also to point out too that the um, this product, unlike uh, Fortress Europe, which again was kind of a transitional uh, book, um, this one is is themed to Normandy. So we have more Sherman types, for example. So we do get our um, 76 millimeter armed Sherman as well as the 105 millimeter assault gun version of the Sherman. So we do get extra versions that aren't present in Fortress Europe that are, again, themed for Normandy, which is really nice. Also, the support units, um, they do have some support units that were very, um, you know, dedicated to Normandy, or that's what you associate them with. For example, the M12 155 millimeter artillery battery. It's just an awesome looking uh, vehicle with giant gun on a tractor like that and um, Normandy is a great place to play that because that's where they were um, deployed pretty much most heavily. So again you have units that are are themed towards Normandy and I really appreciate that about this this book. I really like it about the book. I do want to mention uh, the missions or, or battles as they call them here in the book um, that could form like a linked uh, mini campaign. So they they have, for example, uh, paratrooper landings and a beach fighting. So it's really cool that they included those. I know that they um, they got away from that in some of the later version uh, three source books, uh, but they used to have them in I think the version two ones all the time. Um, so it's really nice to have those in here, particularly with Normandy, where it's such a unique. Um, you know, area of conflict. You had paratroopers, you had a beach landing, you had bocage fighting, you had tank on tank combat, you had all these different ways to, to battle in Normandy and this book really kind of captures captures it all. I'm gonna have to dust off my beach landing table to give this a, give this a go. And I do like that they um, they actually included the fortification rules and stats. Even though there's no Germans in the book um, you you can they do have the stats for all of the bunkers and gun nests and stuff that you would need for the mission that's in here so that if you do use uh, Fortress Europe for your Germans you can still add appropriate fortifications to your list for something like a beach landing which is really cool and thoughtful of them alright so the book itself I really like the book I'm like I said I'm pleasantly surprised I was ready to not be happy about it and not give up my late war um, books that I had for version 3 uh, but overall I'm, I'm really pleased with that um, if the German and British source books are on par with this the same quality as this book I think um, late war is going to be in a very good place for flames of war um, and, and um, I, I really mean that so this book um, cost twenty dollars it is 112 pages and it's got a lot of stuff and twenty dollars this has the equivalent of almost like three different uh, I forget if it was a version 2 or version 3 source books but it had the you know there was a beach landing intelligence briefing there was a paratrooper book there was a Cobra book um, this has basically all three of those uh, crammed into one, almost like a compilation, which is is really cool and a really neat way to do things. All right, so I'll give you my final thought once we talk about everything, but let's go over here and talk about the companion to this book, which is the D-Day American Command Cards. Okay. All right, so the uh, Command Cards are um, 
are interesting. So they introduced these in uh, version 4 mid-war and basically it's a way to customize your forces to add some flavor to them by you know adding some cool things. So this is the the deck of cards that comes with uh, or you purchase it separately for D-Day American command cards. Um, this cost uh, ten dollars at my local store, ten dollars American. So buying the command cards and the book uh, is a total of thirty dollars US um, which is still a lot less than um, you know a 40k codex if you will. Do you need these to play? No. Um, the this source book has plenty of good stuff in it and plenty of variation. You don't need the cards. But what can these cards add if you decide to spend, um, you know, you decide to spend money? Okay, I got the box open. So first off, the cards themselves, they're nice, uh, I know it's not the best for camera, but they're, they're nice, thick and glossy. They are pretty good quality. We'll see how the corners hold out. I'm not one to put my stuff in sleeves like uh, uh, Jake does, but I think these are fine quality, nice thick. So in the, the uh, pack, you get different kinds of upgrade cards. Um, you get kind of general upgrade cards, like for example, um, this is just a upgrade card to um, add a, or change a unit of Shermans to Sherman DDs, or you know the floating Shermans for your D-Day invasion which would be very helpful if you're playing the um, beach landing mission. Uh, it costs zero points uh, but it you know lets you now field if you're an American player and you have those DD tank models you bought five years ago um, this pack lets you play with those, lets you swap those in. So any units that might have been missing in D-Day uh, are included here. For example 4.2 inch uh, chemical mortars. You can add that as a platoon. And all these cards are kind of cool. They tell you what it can go. It's a US, uh, it's a unit, and it's limited, so you can only have one of those, I believe. Um, the other thing that they have in here, besides upgrades, is, you know, another one is naval gunfire, you know, uh, 2,000 pound bombs on your P-47 Thunderbolt. Um, they also have unit and uh, hero cards. So, for example, we looked in the book and we saw the 2nd Armored Division and the 3rd Armored Division were represented here. But this really gets into uh, a whole bunch of different divisions. I think this whole stack is, is different uh, uh, units. And some of these are, um, you know, they're just minor changes, but it gives you a uh, flavor. If you want to build and play with the 83rd Infantry Division, uh, you can do that. Um, this is for a rifle company, one point, and then you can see it has uh, statistics that are, are altered to represent the 83rd Infantry Division. This, in, in this case, has a counterattack of three, a rally of four, and there are a lot of units uh, here. Uh, infantry divisions, um, all of the ones that participated in Normandy. So overall, I think there's 40 cards in this set. Um, and a good chunk of those are dedicated to different uh, units. Um, then you've got the heroes. These are were in the uh, D-Day book and the other books. You've got Lafayette Poole for your, you know, put them in a uh, M4 Sherman. Uh, you've got Norman Dutch Cotta, you know, put them on the beach, help motivate those troops. So you've got those models. Again, you've got a card, a way to do it. Um, so these are geared more towards, I think, um, one, players who are already in the game like myself and have a collection of Americans. You know, I have a platoon of 4.2 inch mortars. I have these special characters. I have Sherman DDs. A way I can play with those units um, without necessarily uh, Flames of War having to re-release everything all at once. So I think that's, a, that's kind of an a interesting way to do it. I'm still not completely sold on the cards as a concept. And that's just a concept difference. Uh, you know, these could have been included as um, blurbs or, or stuff in the rule book. And, you know, maybe it added some more pages. Maybe the book was 25 instead of 20. I don't know which would be better. But if they want to keep it separate, I can see why they're thinking about it. Uh, you know, here in this book, all of the units are stuff you can buy. 
currently in the current range. The new Sherman sprues, the new plastic Stewart's, all that stuff is all that's in here and either has been released or will be released shortly. Now, the stuff here um, might be a little bit further out. They might uh, never re-release them. I, I don't know what their plans are, but it gives veterans like me the ability to, to play with them. Um, so am I sold with the cards? Uh, I don't know. I, it, you know. If you're new to the game, you don't need the cards. But if you wanted to delve far, further into list building, want to delve further into a particular unit or division, want to play with some of these uh, heroes, uh, then check out the cards. The nice thing is the cards aren't that expensive. They're only 10 bucks for, like I said, 40 cards, and it's uh, a great way to uh, add those extras. I also wanted to mention that this does give you two new formations to play with, uh, your Cavalry uh, Recon Troop and an Engineering Company. Um, so it has cards for the platoon as well. So this is two new formations to add to the list. Um, Cavalry Recon obviously is all your little uh, scout cars and engineering company engineers. Um, just a different flavor. Not a lot of people have Cavalry Recon. Um, I don't know how popular it is and maybe that's why I didn't make the cut into the regular book. Um, but you've got these here because there are players, like for me, I do have a Cavalry Recon troop. Um, that would make it fun to play and um, you know it got it has all the information here uh, but again could this have been included in the the big book you yeah, know maybe I don't mind um, we'll come back and uh, you know when we talk about everything at the end and give you my final thoughts on that but uh, that's a look at the cards all right next up we're gonna look at the unit cards now this is probably the most optional out of all the things we looked at if you don't want the unit cards you don't need the unit cards. Um, they are just a play aid. All of the stats and stuff are in the book, um, so nothing is really uh, duplicated here that you need. Um, as you can see, it runs $15 US. That's what I paid for it at our local game store, and it contains 70 cards. All right, if you saw my review back in the day, I did take a look at the uh, late war cards that came out um, that were kind of a uh, interim between version 3, it had the version 3 points, and uh, version 4 rules. And although it was cool, I, I like the concept of these, uh, you know, unit cards, um, there was a lot of duplication in that set. Um, and, you know, there's like three or four Sherman cards, three or four Tiger cards. Um, this, at first glance, doesn't, uh, doesn't appear to do that. They seem to have caught themselves on that. Um, it does come with a, a fold-out, uh, like, formation guide, the formations you can build. Interestingly enough, it does not include the extra companies that come in here. So just know that for you American Recon players. Um, and then it, it's just handy. It has your support units. It has your, um, you know, a cheat sheet for your movement orders, which is nice. Um, I'm not going to go through all the cards, but just kind of show them off. Uh, I, again, really like the cards. I know not everyone likes the cards, and again, you don't need them. Uh, but I've liked it since they uh, started this with Team Yankee and um, carried it on into version 4 of Flames of War. I just like having um, all the stats there, not having to page through the, the rule book. Um, you know, sometimes it can look a little silly when all this stuff is kind of laid off on the side of the table, but I think it looks fine. The, um, the nice thing is, too, there's not uh, uh, duplicates in here. So, for example, there are two um, Sherman platoon cards, but as we saw in the, uh, the D-Day book, one card is for the uh, veterans and one card is for the regular Sherman platoon. So there's not a lot of duplication in the set. Um, and that's because, I'm sure in part, because there's a lot of American units to kind of go over in the D-Day book, which is cool. So, you don't have to do any translation as far as these stats. If you're playing the vets, you've got the vet card. If you're not, you, you use the other card. Um, so I appreciate that. And they have versions for everything, the, the veteran HQ, the, you know, the regular HQ, and so on. The cards are nice quality. They have, hard to pick up on the map. Um, again, it's this high gloss there. 
fairly thick. You know, it's like a playing card, and um, they they look good. I like the layout. Everything is clear here uh, with the weapons and so on. So they've done a good job. On the back, they have the cost as well as any special rules. And I like Stabilizer. He's just a negative now. nowadays. Stabilizer plus one to hit when moving rate of fire. And that's just because the 75 millimeter has a, a two for moving rate of fire. So a little bit different in, than version three, but basically the same effect. You have to use stabilizers though in, uh, in this version. I know someone had asked me that in a battle report. Someone left a comment about that. But yeah, you have to use your stabilizers if you are moving. So you're always at a plus one to hit. Uh, but I like the cards. Again, I don't think you need them. But a uh, player like me, maybe you're getting older, your memory's not what it used to be. Um, it's a great reference to have. $15 for you know that many cards is not bad. Um, and again, particularly if you're a, a veteran player like me, you, you know I, I have most of these vehicles and teams and units um, in my collection somewhere, so it's nice to have a card for them. So what do I think of the uh, D-Day American release for Flames of War version 4? Um, my final thought is I'm very happy with it. Uh, if you're an American player and you're still playing Flames of War, I think this is a no-brainer. This is really um, a, a great book, uh, lots of information in there, lots of formations to play with, lots of very Normandy-themed units, uh, you know, D-Day missions to play, um, a, a good um, section on the history. So it's really nice. Um, I, so I like the, the book. Unequivocally, I can recommend that for any American late war player. Um, and in fact, it's so cheap, 20 bucks, even if you don't play Americans, if you think you're going to be facing them in events or tournaments or in games, it's not bad to have to be able to you know, see what your opponent might be able to do. Um, the command cards. Well, that's kind of a, a iffy. Command cards are cool. They, they do add extra flavor, but you have extra cards to manage. Um, I do wish they were in the regular book, but I see why they're doing it in this release the way that they're doing it. Um, so if you are a veteran player like myself, um, I think these are worthwhile. I think it's not a bad investment. If you have these older units or older models or, you know, a recon platoon or recon company you want to play with, uh, this is a great way to do it. If you want to add more flavor to your list, you want to play a particular division in Normandy, more than likely it's in here. And it can just give you that extra bit of flavor in your list building. So, yeah, if, if you're uh, like me or want some more detail in your list building, the command cards are great. If you could care less about that or you're brand new, don't bother confusing yourself with this and just go with the book. Uh, the, the book is fantastic and you can build so many things out of it, you don't necessarily need it. But again, for someone like me, I probably will end up using it. There is some cool stuff in here and um, you have that. I will also say that some of the D-Day stuff does feel a little incomplete. Um, the, I should say the landing, Normandy landing, without the command cards. For example, the, the duplex drive Sherman, the DD Sherman, is not in this book anywhere, even though there's a beach landing mission. Um, it's, it's in here. Um, so it does have that. Again, if you're, you're looking for more depth, the command cards are the way to go. Last but not least, the unit cards, <clears throat> I like them, so I'm going to say yes, but I understand it's totally a subjective thing. One, you don't need them. So adding this to your purchases on, on uh, you know, D-Day is, you know, you're paying 20 plus 10 plus 15. So it starts to add up. But y again, you don't need those. They're, they're nice to have. I like them. I'm very happy I bought them, but you don't need them to play. So there you go, guys. That's my look at the D-Day American Forces book for Flames of War Late War version 4. Please let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think about uh, kind of Battlefront's direction here at Late War? Like I said earlier, I'm kind of pleased and pleasantly surprised, but I'd like to hear from you guys as well. As always, please check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. You can keep up with us there, what we're doing. Uh, we try to, to post there pretty often. 
Also, please give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube. We always appreciate it. It helps the channel do what we do. As always, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.